Welcome to Daily Prayer with the Sutton team on Wednesday the 24th of June. Today we're thinking about the birth of John the Baptist. John heralded the coming of Jesus. Thinking of Jesus reminds me of Christmas. One of the experiences I enjoy at Christmas is listening to or singing in Handel's Messiah. The words were chosen by Charles Jennings and are taken from the King James translation of the Bible. The opening solos and chorus are taken directly from the first five verses of today's Old Testament Bible passage. When I hear them at the beginning of the Messiah, I have this great thrill that I'm about to hear and take part in something deeply meaningful, which carries something of the mystery and magnificent magnificence of Almighty God. In this passage, Jerusalem personifies all who believe in God and his son, Jesus Christ. John is going to read from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, the rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our Lord endures for ever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judea, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This passage was actually written for telling the deliverance of God's people Israel from their exile in Babylon. With our knowledge of the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, we can also see that it predicts a much greater deliverance, the deliverance of humankind from the consequences of sin and evil. It reminds us that the sin of humankind has already been paid for, and immediately after foretells the role John the Baptist will play in how this is achieved. A voice of one calling, in the desert prepare the way for the Lord. John announces the one who will break into history and come to the aid of his people, Jew and Gentile alike. We are reminded of the brevity of human life, comparing it with the grass and flowers of the field, which lasted only a short time before withering and dying in the Palestinian heat. We are here on earth only a short time, but nevertheless, our lives matter to the God who remains forever. We are totally unable to save ourselves from sin, so God did that himself. This is our great Christian hope and belief, that our short time here on earth prepares us for our, our eternal time with our loving God when we leave this earthly existence. 
and this reading from Isaiah leads us nicely into the Gospel reading for today. We learn something about the parents God chose for John. In some ways, the preparation for the birth was similar to, to the preparation for the birth of Jesus, but not in all ways. For Jesus, his earthly father was a descendant of a King David. For John, his father was a priest in the temple. Both John's parents had strong Jewish faith and trusted in God, but both were elderly. At the time when the book of Isaiah was written, the priests were divided into groups. Incense was continually burned in the most holy part of the temple and had to be refreshed each day before morning sacrifice and again before the evening sacrifice. Each group of priests would serve in the temple for one week every six months. Lots were drawn to determine which priest of the group would have the honour of performing this important duty. So you can see that a priest may rarely, if ever, carry out this task. But God ensured that Zechariah perform the incense duty so that he could send his messenger the able angel Gabriel to give the news that he would have a son and that son would be an important part of God's plan for the redemption of all God's children. Despite being a priest, Zechariah was understandably surprised and dubious about such news, so Gabriel gave him a sign to emphasise the truth of this message. He made him deaf and dumb. Many translations only say that he became dumb, but the Greek word used means deaf as well as dumb, and so he stayed till the birth of his son, John. Elizabeth, on the other hand, seems to have taken the news in her stride. From the biblical accounts, both Elizabeth and Mary, the mother of Jesus, showed great faith in the messages Gabriel brought, as indeed did Joseph even though Elizabeth received it second-hand from a man who could not speak, though we know he could write. Zechariah and Elizabeth returned home after the term of duty, and in due course Elizabeth was overjoyed to find she was pregnant. And so we come to our passage from the Gospel of Luke, which John will read. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 1 verses 37 to 66 and verse 80. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, There is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment he wrote, His name is John. Immediately his mouth was opened, and his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbours were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea people were asking and talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, What then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel. From these verses, we can see that Elizabeth shows great faith. She gives birth to her precious son. Now, when I was a first-time mother and gave birth to a son, I was so excited about naming him. Such a privilege to name a brand new human baby. My husband John and I wanted it to be something we decided together. We wanted to include family names as he had been born into a family we wanted to remember and honour. 
This was obviously an even stronger tradition at the time John the Baptist was born. Hence neighbours and relatives expected him to be named after his father, Zechariah. But Elizabeth spoke up clearly and decisively. No, he is to be called John. These neighbours and relatives felt this was not how it should be. Perhaps Elizabeth was acting on her own over this. So they asked Zechariah. This is where we find that he had been struck deaf as well as dumb because they had to make signs to him when they asked this question. We are told that the neighbours and relatives were amazed when he wrote down, his name is John, confirming that both parents were faithful to God and obeying his directive on the naming issue. And it seems to me that this was understood by all listening to the conversation. You can, you can imagine the grapevine of Palestine working overtime, spreading this amazing occurrence. And what did Zechariah do when he got his hearing and voice back? He was immediately filled with the Holy Spirit and praised God, prophesying the part his son will play in God's great plan. Zechariah had been told by Gabriel that his son would bring his parents joy and delight and would be filled with the Holy Spirit, bringing people back to God and preparing the way of the Lord. Elizabeth too was prepared for her role the unborn child would play in God's plan. She recognised the significance of her unborn child moving in her womb when her pregnant cousin Mary came to visit her. She was filled with the Holy Spirit, blessing Mary and the child she carried within her. Not many of us know how our children will turn out. Perhaps we can be too concerned about their future or not prepared enough for how their lives actually work out. Zechariah and Elizabeth showed great faith in God's promises and this must have helped them to bring up their son as they prepared him to follow God's calling. What does this say to Christians today? Some of us may have been guided by God to know how our children will live out their lives, but many of us don't know. With today's thinking, we can feel that our children are entitled to make their own decisions, to listen to God's call for themselves. Sometimes we may be disappointed by how their lives turn out. Gabriel had told Zechariah the positive aspects of their son John's life but they could not have known how he would die. They did not need to know that. Perhaps they didn't live long enough to find out. Remember, they were both quite elderly. The account of what led to the birth of John the Baptist makes me think of what we do know about the future and what promises we can expect God to keep. And there are many of them in the Bible. Here are some of them. God is good. In Nahum chapter 1 verse 7 we read, The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. And in Psalm 100 verse 5 we read, For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. These words were written in the Old Testament, a time in the Bible when we often think as full of battles and killings. But here we have the promise of God's goodness. This promise is with us now as we battle with and live through the COVID-19 pandemic. It is with us as we cope with the ups and downs of our everyday lives, whatever that is bringing us at the moment. God promises to be with us. In Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8 we read, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Again, we find that God is very much with his people in the Old Testament. This promise reminds us that God is with us in the 21st century. 
He is with us throughout our lives. He, we can lean on him in our times of fear, anxiety, discouragement and sadness. He is our guide through life. God promises to provide for our needs. In Matthew chapter 6 verses 31 to 33 we read, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Words of Jesus himself. This promise reassures us that God provides for our real needs, and in our turn we must continually strive to faithfully follow Jesus in our lives. And here's an amazing promise. In John 14 verses 1 to 3 we read, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may be where I am also. Again, words spoken by Jesus himself. This amazing promise reminds us that this life is not the end. Jesus has secured for those of us who follow him a place in God's eternal kingdom where the troubles of this world will no longer weigh us down. God's promise about answering prayer. In Mark chapter 11 verse 24 we read, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. In this promise, Jesus reminds us that God hears and answers our prayers. That doesn't mean we shall have everything we want like spoilt children, but that we shall have what we need. Remember, God has promised that he knows what we need. Some amazing promises, and there are many more promises along similar lines to reassure us in the Bible. This brings us nicely to a time of prayer. Over the last week, our three churches have started to reopen. We have had the opportunity to enter them for the first time in three months for, for private prayer. I went to St Nicholas Church when it first opened last Thursday. Instead of walking in, greeting everyone as they came in, checking those who were reading the Bible passages, leading the prayers and serving the tea and coffee, or practising a hymn tune or anthem with the choir. Instead of these business-like activities, I walked into quiet and profound peace. I found a pew to sit on and looked up at the chancel. The lights were on there and I appreciated the beauty a small band of decorators had given to that part of the church just before the lockdown. It drew my eyes to the altar where I felt compelled to offer praise to God for all that is beautiful in the world. Then I closed my eyes. I didn't hear the words of a familiar service. I heard the gentle, incessant rain outside, refreshing the world. I heard the distinct and loud call of birdsong rising above the rain. In the background, I could just about hear the hum of traffic and a train going by. It was as if nature had taken over the world for a brief time. Nature as God made it. I'm going to use those images that came to me to form our prayers today. Imagine you are in the church you usually worship in on a Sunday, looking towards the altar. Feel the peace and tranquility of God slowly wrapping around you, calming your mind. You are in God's presence, 
so we pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer. You know our needs and you know our desires. You know the things that press on our hearts and that we want to bring to you. But first, still our racing minds and help us to focus our thoughts on you. We praise you that we can begin to return to worship in our familiar church buildings. May the unlocking process continue safely until we can share our faith and worship in more usual ways. At the same time, may we benefit from the experience of the last three months and use this to further our connection with and outreach to our local community. May we use what we have learned as individuals and as your church to bring your gospel to people who have not heard it or have not seen it as relevant to their lives. Loving God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As I looked out of my kitchen window the other day, I saw raindrops settled on a rose in the garden. Gentle, refreshing rain that sustains the life of all that is living. Let us thank God for all that refreshes us in our lives, both physically, emotionally and spiritually. And let us remember the needs of others so that they too may be refreshed. Loving God, we praise you that you provide all that we need in our lives. This pandemic has emphasised how great the difference is between those who have what they need and those who do not have what they need. We pray for all people who have suffered from insufficient to meet their basic needs during this time of pandemic and lockdown. Basic needs such as enough to eat, somewhere to live and sleep safely, appropriate health care, love and safety at home, justice and fair treatment, financial safety. Give to the leaders, advisers and decision makers of the world the wisdom to seek to meet the needs of the people whom they are responsible for. Give to the people they work for the understanding and determination to align their own wishes and what they see as their own rights with what will help and benefit the wider society. Loving God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I have loved the noisy bird song that I have heard so much during the months of lockdown. The sound of wood pigeons cooing in the evening has always reminded me of being in the country. I have been delighted to see two friendly pigeons enjoying fat balls on our bird bath over the last few weeks. God provides for these creatures as much as he provides for us. Loving God, you have provided your human creation with enough of everything to meet the needs of the world. But long before the pandemic, humankind had distributed it unfairly. We pray for local communities and nations where there is an ongoing shortage of medical equipment, shortage of food and clean water, shortage of adequate housing, shortage of paid work, shortage of justice. We pray that despite COVID-19, the ongoing plight of these people is not overlooked by world leaders. We praise you for the voluntary organisations which aim to even out the distribution, distribution of basic necessities and ask you to keep such organisations and their workers safe from illness and violence as they continue with their tasks. Loving God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The busyness of human life in the 21st century has been rested over the last three months, but now we are slowly emerging from the restrictions of lockdown. We pray that we may have learned the importance of caring more carefully for our world and the people in it more effectively. Heavenly Father, we praise you for our lives Help us to make of them all that you intended us to. Help us to learn from our time in lockdown so that when we can return to life without COVID-19, we are not only refreshed, 
but also better equipped to continue to carry out the work you have assigned to each of us in our daily lives. May humankind be, be more aware of the damage we inflict, inflict on our world. Pollution of air, land and sea, plastic use, disposal of rubbish, spread of diseases. May we strive to change our practices in order to save our world. Loving God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We close our time together by saying the grace. The, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the love of God, and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.